Добрый день, уважаемые коллеги. Good afternoon, dear colleagues and the participants of the annual shareholders meeting of the open joint stock company Gazprom for the announcement of the results of the registration of the participants of the meeting as well as the establishment of the quorum for the agenda. We are giving the floor to the chairman of the audit commission of the shareholders meeting, general director of the closed joint stock company, the specialty registrar and the holder of the registry of shareholders of the gas industry, Alexander Karavayev, please. Thank you. Good afternoon, dear participants of the annual shareholders meeting of the company Gazprom. As of May 7, 2015, which is the date by when the list of individuals were compiled who are entitled to participate in the annual shareholders meeting, the number of votes with respect to the outstanding voting shares possessed by the persons included into that list was 23,673,512,900. The number of votes with respect to the outstanding voting shares possessed by the persons participating in the current annual shareholders meeting of Gazprom is listed here on the screen. At the point of uh, opening per every agenda item, here you see the number of the participating votes. In this way, the quorum governing the agenda items is uh, there and uh, the meeting can be declared open. Thank you. Thank you. As of May 7th, 2015, which is the date uh, when the list of individuals was compiled who are entitled to, to participate in the annual shareholders meeting of Gazprom, the number of votes with respect uh, to the outstanding voting shares possessed by the owners of uh, various papers and securities listed uh, and who are entitled to vote on the agenda items amounted to 23 billion. 673,512,900. And for the point uh, in time, for the, uh, which is 10 o'clock this a.m. this morning, the number of votes related to the outstanding voting shares possessed by the persons participating in the annual shareholders meeting who are entitled to vote on the agenda items in this way has the necessary quorum and the meeting can legally begin. Dear participants of the meeting, as I stated, we've got the necessary quorum pertaining to all of the agenda items and the annual shenu annual shareholders meeting of Gazprom is declared open. The uh, chairman of uh, the panel, as part of the members of the board, have been defined by the decision of the board of directors in compliance with the provision governing the annual shareholders meeting. Dear shareholders and dear shareholder representatives, when declaring I would like to declare the agenda items. First, the adoption of the annual company report. Second, the uh, approval of the annual accounting report, including the financial performance results of the company. Third, the uh, approval of the distribution of the profit of the company based on the results of 2014. Fourth item about the size of the dividends, the time frame and the form of uh, payment considering the results of 2014 and the establishment of the date by which the individuals and persons are going to be defined who are entitled to receive dividends. Item 5. Approval of uh, the appointment of the auditor of the company. Six. Compensation for the work done by individuals who are members of the board who are not government officials in the amounts established by the internal documents of the company. Item 7, on payment of a compensation for the work done within the audit commission to its members who are not government officials in the amounts set forth by the internal documents of the company. Item 8, on the approval of the articles of association of Gazprom in the new draft. Item 9, approval of the related party transactions which 
may be entered into by joint stock company Gazprom in its future regular operations. Item 10, election of the members of the board of the company, and item 11, election of the members of the audit commission of the company. And I would like to inform the participants of the annual general shareholders meeting on the order of process and the regulament and timing. And these requirements are defined by the current legislation, by the Articles of Association, and the provision regulating the process of the annual general shareholders meeting. So the process and the timing is as follows. Before we consider the agenda items, there will be an explanation given in terms of the order of voting by the chairman of the audit commission of the shareholders meeting, the general director of the closed joint stock company, special registrar, holder of the registries of the shareholders of the gas industry, Mr. Alexander Karavayev. With respect to the first seven items, as well as the item number 10 and item number 11 of the agenda, the floor will be given to the deputy chairman of the board of directors, chairman of the management board, Mr. Alexei Miller. The time frame for this report up to 35 minutes. As far as agenda items number eight and nine, the floor will be given to the member of the management board, head of the Joseph Company Gazprom Department, Nikolai Dubik, with uh, the timing of up to 10 minutes, following which there will be a 30-minute discussion of the report, whereby each speaker will be given up to 10 minutes. Answers to the questions of the participants of uh, the meeting, if we receive them, I'm sure we will, in the course of this meeting, up to 10 minutes. And let me remind you, that in accordance with the provision on the general shareholders meeting of Jones the Company Gazprom, questions may be submitted to the sh by the shareholders only in writing before the speakers finish their presentation. Once all of the questions of the agenda are debated and complete in this discussion, there will be one hour given for voting to those who haven't been able to submit their votes before the agenda items have been completed in their debate. And after the voting is done, the Audit Commission will begin summarizing the results of voting and shall report on the results of voting to the participants of the meeting. And with uh, very strict uh, compliance with the uh, timing, and that's very much dependent upon us, dear colleagues. We are planning to finish uh, today's general annual shareholders meetings at about 3 p.m. Now, please allow me to thank the representatives of mass media for the coverage of the opening ceremony of our shareholders meeting. And at this point in time, I would like the media representatives to leave the room. Now, to, in order to give an explanation about uh, the voting process, I will give the floor to the chairman of the audit commission of the shareholders meeting, the general director of the closed joint stock company, the special registrar holder of the registries of the shareholders of the gas industry, Mr. Alexander Karabay. You're welcome. Thank you very much, Mr. Alexander. Well, dear shareholders, once again, good uh, afternoon. In order to participate in today's voting at this meeting, each of you have been given a set of four ballots, uh, which uh, are having 13 pages altogether. Ballot number one is intended to vote for the agenda items from the first one till the eighth, and it is on two pages, please note. In order to vote against each uh, wording, you must select just one option, either for or against or abstain and mark it. In order for the ballot to be valid, you must uh, fix your signature in the right bottom corner of it on every page. Ballot number two in your set has eight pages to it and is intended to vote 
for item agenda number nine and 94 items within that particular item. So uh, uh, filling out of this particular ballot is similar to the number one ballot and you have to sign it on every page. Ballot number three has one page and is intended to vote uh, on agenda item number 10, election of the members of the board of directors of the company. And please note, dear shareholders, that the voting on this particular item is a cumulative one, which means that the number of votes possessed by any particular shareholder is multiplied by 11 in terms of the number of the board members that are to be elected in this number, which is a resulting one, is noted in the top right-hand corner of the ballot. In order to vote, you must mark just one option, either for or against or abstain, and in case you uh, marked it as for, you can distribute the, uh, the uh, number of votes mentioned above um, just uh, in between one or several candidates. Uh, please mind you that the ballot also has to have a signature. And finally, the ballot number four of the set that you have has two pages and is intended to, to be voted for agenda item number 11. It is very important to note that in compliance with the Article Association of uh, Gazprom and the provision governing the work of the Audit Commission, the number of uh, four options should not be more than nine. In terms of um, four options that you vote uh, for, no more than nine. With respect to the rest of them, it's either against or abstain, and the ballot has to be signed. As long as you might have any questions, there is not a commission who are in the lobby, and they would be able to help you fill out your ballots. Thank you very much. Thank you, Alexander Vladimirovich. Dear shareholders, now we shall begin the discussion of the agenda items, and as far as the first seven items are concerned, as well as item number 10 and item number 11 of the agenda is given to the deputy chairman of the board of directors, chairman of the management board of uh, Gazprom, Alexei Miller. Dear shareholders, we have uh, prepared the detailed materials uh, for the shareholders meeting about the operations by Gazprom and its subsidiaries throughout 2014, which is the annual report, the counting report, then uh, the uh, opinion by the audit uh, commission, the auditor's uh, review, and other materials. So we ask of the shareholders meeting to endorse the annual report uh, by Gazprom uh, for 2014, the countering report for 2014, the distribution of uh, profit, as well as proposals by the board of directors uh, as to the amount, the time frame, in the form of the payment of dividends resulting from 2014. We also submitted for the approval of the meeting the transactions uh, which uh, have a related party nature to them, including the ones which may be entered into in the future in the process of our regular economic operation. We also submit to for your decision such items as uh, to uh, approve the auditor and uh, the level of compensation to the members of the board and the members of the audit commission of the company, also on the election of the members of the board and the audit commission. The draft resolutions pertaining to these items uh, are contained in your ballots, uh, whereas additional information is contained in various uh, handouts for the shareholders. Dear shareholders, in 2014, Gazprom created the beachhead for a new movement forward. We have expanded our resource base, we've grown our operational capacities, and we're able to sustain the leading positions both in the Russian and the global gas industry. We have increased our share in the European market and undertook a decisive step this decisive breakthrough in the Asia, into the Asian market. Gazprom continues to demonstrate a dynamic growth in its financial performance. For example, the annual EBITDA growth throughout the past 10 years denominated in US dollars amounted to 15 percent, while the average growth of this particular indicator amongst the 10 major public oil and gas companies in the world is just at 2% level. In 2014, Gazprom entered into the top three leaders 
in as far as EBITDA is concerned. In the reporting year, it amounted to about 52 billion U.S. dollars, which is equivalent to 2 trillion rubles. And at the same time, the revenue from sales compared to the previous year grew by 6.5 percent, amounting to more than 147 billion U.S. dollars, or 5.6 trillion rubles. Positive revenue sales dynamics enables Gazprom to achieve high levels of operational cash flow, which completely underpins our capital investment. Gazprom is a financially stable company. In terms of the correlation between the borrowed and owned capital, we are able to comply with the norm which is set forth by the corporate system of strategic performance indicators with the allowance for about 40 percent. It is currently at the level of 23.4 percent. Considering the results of 2014, the board of directors recommends us to pay the dividends in the amount of 7 rubles 20 kopecks per share, which is exactly the amount we had last year. Here. In this way, we are allocating to the dividend payout about 90% from the net profit under the Russian accounting standards. This decision by the Board of Directors demonstrates our adherence to the policy of maintaining a stable level of dividend payout, enabling Gazprom to maintain its leadership amongst the Russian oil and gas companies in as far as the general amount of dividend is concerned and the amount of dividend payment into the Russian budget. Dear shareholders, our confidence in the future is supported by a very important factor. This is a continuously growing resource base. As of the end of 2014, the explored reserves by Gazprom under Russian specification amounted to 36.1 trillion cubic meters of natural gas and 3.3 billion tons of the liquid hydrocarbons. Gazprom's resource base continuously grows thanks to a properly selected strategy and a high level of exploration excellence. Since 2001, we discovered 40 new fields and 90 new deposits. In the reporting year, that is East Imtinskaya gas field and 30 deposits, the biggest ones of them are in the Jurassic level of subsurface, the coefficient of the resource replacement of the natural gas throughout the exploration during 2014 went up to a record level of 1.86, while in the liquid hydrocarbons, condensate and oil, up to 3. Dear shareholders, in the reporting period, the amount of the production of gas by Gazprom Group completely met the needs of our consumers. In 2014, Gazprom produced 443.9 billion cubic meters of gas, less than in 2013. The reduction of the production is related to a warm winter period of 2013-2014 season, the enormity in terms of the warmth uh, in the autumn in the beginning of winter in 2014, as well as with a decline in the demand for gas in the immediate and farther abroad. Although the trends in this year confirm our expectations whereby the demand for gas will grow and Gazprom is ready for that. Supplies of the fuels to the country being able to go through the peaks uh, in the seasonal consumption under any conditions is the high mission of Gazprom which we've been successfully utilizing and implementing producing gas and oil, building gas pipelines and underground storages. In 2014, during the periods of peak consumption, the maximum daily output was 1,648,000,000 cubic meters of gas. In February 2014, we registered a historic maximum of the daily supplies of gas in the area of the single gas supply system, 1,790,000,000 
million cubic meters. But in terms of our actual capacities, in terms of the annualization, amount to 617 billion cubic meters of production of gas a year. Further on, the level of production will be maintained through the introduction into uh, operation of the new capacities in the Yamal Peninsula as well as the development of the Nadim Portaz region. We are developing the Archimots uh, formations in the Uringoy fields and the development of the Volangine layers and in the immediate, mid-term and long-term plans of our activities are the development of the gas fields in the op inlet, the offshore of the Barinsova, Karska and Ohotsk seas, the eastern Siberia and the far east of Russia. We are not only developing the gas fields, we are creating and developing gas production centers where the hydrocarbon wealth becomes the source of uh, industrial and economic development of the territories. In 2014, we have developed and endorsed comprehensive plans to establish gas production, gas transportation, and gas processing capacities in the Yakutsk and Irkutsk hubs. hubs. In three years' time, there will begin a staged development of the Chayanda field, which is going to be the base uh, production for the Yakutia. In terms of Irkutsk, there will be a Kovikta field, which will serve as the base development field. Not least important work we are conducting as part of the East, Eastern Gas Program on the shores of the Pacific Ocean, where are we developing the capacities of the Sakhalin gas production hub. The top priority facilities here are in in the Sakhalin 3 project, its gas will be the resource base for the gas transportation system Sakhalin, Khabarovsk, Vladivostok. In October 2014, Gazprom began industrial development of the first field within the Sakhalin 3 project, which is Kirin Square Field. Special words of thanks should be said about the gas production center that we are developing in Yamal. There, in very severe Arctic areas, work is in full swing, which ensures sound future of the Russian gas industry. Thus, in December 2014, at the Bovanenko, we commissioned into operation a new gas production with a capacity of 30 billion cubic meters of gas a year. Previously to that, in 2012, we've started the gas production worth 60 billion cubic meters of output, and in this way, the potential productivity at the Bovanenko grew up to 90 billion cubic meters, which is comparable to the amount that Gazprom last year supplied to the biggest three buyers of the Russian gas, Germany, Turkey and Italy. Altogether, in that field, there will be three centers for production with a total design output capacity at 115 billion cubic meters of gas. Dear shareholders, the development of the Arctic resources today is one of the priority tasks of the national economic development. The Pirazlomne field, which is the only one in the Arctic offshore of Russia where oil is being produced, and we produce it, Gazprom. Our oil received its own gauge brand, which is Arctic oil. We became the pioneers for the development of the hydrocarbon wealth of the Russian Arctic and the production of gas in the offshore areas. Gazprom is actively developing production of the liquid hydrocarbons. In 2014, the Gazprom company, together with the related entities, increased the production of oil up to 53.5 million tons. The gas condensate up to 16.8 million tons. The gas condensate is a premium product compared to crude, thanks to a low content of uh, heavy additives, and within the next three years, we intend to increase the production of the gas condensate by more than 10 percent. One should note that in 2014, we received our first oil at the China. The China has a very special place in our plan, so it is important that we already are able to achieve here practical outcome. Now, the basic work in the production of oil within Gazprom Group is done by Gazprom Neft and in 
2014, Gazprom Neft gained its production as well as the refining of crude, having grown its proven reserves, as well as the amount of premium sales of the refined products. It is notable that Gazprom Neft was able to increase its uh, oil production in the mature fields through the application of new technologies and involving into the op its production and development the tight kind of reserves. Gazprom Neft also works with unconventional reserves in the first place with the Bajenev suite in the Western Siberian area. Currently, they are testing technologies because the resources of the Bajenev are expected to exceed the amount of the shale reserves in North America. And Gazprom Neft has in its plans to start the industrial development of these unconventional reserves by 2015. Dear shareholders, the increase of the efficiency of the refining of the raw materials so as to offer to the market the high added value product is one of our top priorities. Therefore, we are developing our processing and refining capacities, synchronizing them to the amount of the hydrocarbon output, as well as uh, deepening the levels from which we are able to extract uh, valuable components. In 2014, we have commissioned to operation new production lines in the Surgut decomposition stabilization plant, growing it up to 14.1 million tons of annual output. For the purpose of expanding the assortment of product, is improving the quality, we are developing the capacities of the secondary processing of uh, raw materials in Astrakhan and Salavat, we continue to modernize ourselves within the main oil refineries under Gazprom Neft in Omsk and Moscow. With an advanced process in terms of the technical reglement, we were able to switch over to Euro 5 fuel standard, and in 2014 we've increased the refining of oil in an unstable gas cannon set up to 68.1 million tons, whereby the production of the refined product of up to 53.6 million tons of the liquid hydrocarbon gases up to 3.4 million tons helium, up to 4 million cubic meters of gas. Dear shareholders, in 2014, in 20, the 2014 turned out to be a warm year. The average monthly temperature levels considerably exceeded uh, the historical levels, and as a result, the top consumption of gas in Russia throughout 2014 was going down, which was reflected in the work we did in the market in terms of the sale of our product domestically. In 2014, the Gazprom Group sold to the consumers in Russia 217.2 billion cubic meters of gas, which was less than in 2013. However, the revenue from the sale of gas in the Russian market grew by more than 3%, amounting to 798.1 billion rubles. The program for the gasification of the Russian regions is an important area we pursue in the domestic market. In 2014, the access um, that uh, we gain from the advantage of using uh, natural gas was given to additional 237 townships and villages, up to 30 additional households. Today, the level of gasification in the Russian cities is 70.3%. In the rural areas, 54.6%. And in this way, the gasification rurally is something that we've been able to raise above the average level throughout the country compared to the start of the gasification program. But we ought to continue. That is why in 2015, the amount of investment into the gasification is planned at the level of 2014, which is more than 28.8 billion rubles. The most important consumers of gas in Russia are the power sector and households. And that is exactly why, in order to optimize the energy resources and to achieve the synergy effect, we are expanding our activities in the area of generating electricity and heating. Gazprom Group is already a major owner of the generating assets in the country. Gazprom's share in the production of electricity in Russia is 15%, heating 24%. In the reporting year, the production of heating amounted to 125.5 million gigacalories, which exceeds the similar kind of performance indicator in 2013 by 11.3%. As the result of the integration 
of the MOAC company into uh, the structure of Gazprom Group in 2014, we have reestablished a single management of the heating supplies in Moscow. Switching the heating energy towards uh, more effective capacities enabled us to save 203 million cubic meters of gas. Gazprom's group investment program in the power industry is the biggest in Russia, with the growth of new capacities in the period from 2007 until 2016. As a result of this program, should amount to about 9 gigawatts. In 2015, we already commissioned into operation, I mean, in, by 2015, we have commissioned into operation about 6 gigawatts of additional capacities. And today, Gazprom's commissions into operations yet another new gas steam unit at Thermal Power Station 12 in Moscow. You are seeing in front of you one of the most beautiful districts in Moscow, the center of education, culture, government, uh, administration, the energy heart of it is Thermal Power Station 12 on the Berishkovsky embankment. The station was commissioned into operation in June 1941. In those years, it was called the Memorial Frunze Power Station. During the Second World War, there were shops which repaired tanks and produced um, um, the uh, moving power stations. After the war, the station became the energy center for the recovery of the Moscow district around it, people started seeing high rises being built, the new symbols of Moscow, the centers of the government administration, science, culture, and residential areas, and later on, the development of the architectural districts around the thermal power station number 12 reflected the future of the country. The new Arbat Street was created, the Comic-Con building was built where now the Moscow government is sitting, and the Supreme Councils of the Russian Federation, which currently sits the government of the country. The modern Moscow is seeing new high-rises, and the skyscrapers of the new business area, which is Moscow City, receives, uh, you know, heating from thermal power. Station number 12. Despite the compactness in terms of the design of this area, there is a new gas steam unit which is PGU 220. The main basic equipment for this unit, which is gas and steam turbine, the boiler and steam generator were produced in Russia. The new, new unit can more efficiently utilize natural gas, thanks to which the average consumption of fuel per unit of energy overall throughout this station will go down by about 15-20%. Apart from it, contemporary equipment will require, will require less operational costs. Environmental performance will also be improved. As part of the new, new unit, there will be a first new dry exchanger, while the operational, in terms of operations, the water consumption will be reduced as well. With the commission to operation of this new unit in Moscow, the city receives new energy, the energy for life and the energy for its development. Well, good afternoon, dear Alexei Borisovich. Good afternoon, dear shareholders. Um, here is the general director of Gazprom Energy Holding, Denis Fyodorov. We are right now at the control panel of the thermal power station number 12, where we are commissioning into operation the new unit with a nominal capacity of 220 megawatt. This is the seven energy unit which Gazprom built in the Moscow area, whereas the first four energy units we built uh, within the uh, orbital ring road. The th now new three units have been built in the central areas of the city and serve further improvement of uh, the security of supplies to the energy consumers who reside in the central areas of the city. Dear Mr. Miller, about 80% of the equipment in this power station were produced in Russia, and furthermore, we will do our best in order to try and make sure that uh, the maximum amount of equipment that we use here will be locally made. Dear Mr. Miller, please allow me to uh, switch uh, this unit and uh, achieve this nominal capacity. Please begin. Uh, 
Dear Alexei Borisovich, the unit has reached its nominal capacity. Well, congratulations now with this EU energy unit being fully operational and thank you for the good job done. Thank you. Well, let's uh, resume uh, the annual shareholders' meeting. The expansion of the geography of Gazprom's projects is a, the kind of diversification which supports the global growth in our operations. In the reporting year, Gazprom Group con conducted exploration work uh, in the territory of the CS countries, European countries, Southeast Asia, Africa, and the Middle East, and Latin America. As of the 31st of December, 2014, Gazprom's Gazprom portfolio contained 38 projects in exploration and production of uh, the overseas hydrocarbons, the basic ones of which you see on this slide. Dear shareholders, Gazprom successfully utilizes and develops the biggest gas transportation system in the world is geographic coverage and productivity completely complies with the task that we're trying to achieve to provide energy resources to the consumers in Russia and abroad. All particular importance here is the system of underground gas storage, which is the key instrument which supports the peak loads, regulates the seasonal disbalance in terms of consumption, and during the heating period, this particular network ensures and supports that uh, more than 20% of the gas supplies is completely sound. By the beginning of the heating season 2014-2015, potential maximum daily production from the underground storage of Gazprom in the territory of Russia was raised to a record level of 770.4 million cubic of gas. Gas, meters of gas, which is by 42.6 million cubic meters more than by the beginning of the previous season. The prospective Gazprom's plans envisage, within the midterm perspective, the ability to reach the daily recovery at the level of 1 billion cubic meters of gas a day, which would enable us to reduce the cost for the commercial transportation as well as reduce the cost of the transportation of gas. Now, our task abroad is to achieve an active underground storage capacity at the minimum level of 5% from the annual export volumes. And we are attributing the priority to the underground storage for the share ownership by Gazprom Group. Dear shareholders, in the program for the development of the gas transportation system by Gazprom Groups, the most important place is held by the Power of Siberia project. It will change and develop the Russian Far East and will alter the scale of cooperation between Russia and the Asia-Pacific countries. The extension of the Power Siberia pipeline is more than 3,000 kilometers. The export capacity is 38 billion cubic meters of gas per year. The construction of this strong pipeline is an inextricable part of the biggest globally investment project which will ensure the supplies of the Russian gas towards the Far East and along the eastern route towards China. Already in full swing, we are developing the main resource base in the Yakutia gas production hub. The power of Siberia will deliver the fuel and raw materials to the new Russian entities, specifically to the gas processing and helium production facilities, which will be built in the Amur region. All of that would mean thousands of new jobs, a very powerful incentive for the development of the eastern regions. The Power of Siberia project is where we are paying a token of appreciation to the people who, in the long past, created the foundation for the beginning of the development of the Siberian wealth. And it was decided to <coughs> name the compressor station along the power Siberia by the names of the Cossacks, who were the pioneers of the development of the Siberia in the 17th century. Ivan Rebrov, Pyotr Piketov, Maxim Perfiliev, Ivan Moskvitin, Vasily Poyarkov, Yerofey Habarov, Vasily Kolesnikov. Dear shareholders, the power of Siberia will provide the performance of the contract which has already become the contract number one throughout the whole history of the global gas industry. In 2014, Gazprom signed a contract for 400 billion US dollars with the CNPC, Chinese company, according to which in the course of 30 years we will deliver one trillion 
cubic meters of the natural gas. The Chinese market today is one of the fast-paced developing global markets. So the unification of the resource base and the technological capacities on the Gazprom side with the requirements of gas on the side of the Chinese partners will generate an outstanding result. The scale of agreements on the supplies of gas to China is measured not only in billions of dollars and trillions of cubic meters of gas. These contracts will become a decisive factor which will define the future of the energy industry both in Asia as well as globally. Following the Eastern Route contract, already this year, we signed an agreement about the main terms of the supplies of gas to China along the Western Route. This agreement contains more than a dozen articles which are of a legally binding nature. We're talking about the volumes and the time frame of such supplies, the time frame for the construction, minimum daily throughputs, the basic characteristics of gas. Along the Western route, we intend to deliver I mean, 30 billion cubic meters of gas in the course of 30 years annually. We have defined the point of uh, transfer of the gas, which means that this route now has taken on a real shape, and it also has a name to it. It will called the power of Siberia too. <coughs> Along the western route, we will build the first line, and later, the number of such lines may increase up to three uh, lines, which will give us an opportunity to increase the export volumes along the western route of up to 100 billion cubic meters of gas a year. The movement of Gazprom toward the Chinese and Asian market also calls for an additional work that we do in the area of production and trading of the liquefied natural gas. In the east of the country, Sakhalin II will serve as the buttress of this work. During the International Economic uh, Forum in St. Petersburg, we signed a memorandum with Shell on the construction of a third line in the Sakhalin II LNG plant. As a result, the capacity of that plant will grow 1.5 times up to 15 million tons a year. This joint work with Shell deserves particular appreciation because this is the company that we've signed with an agreement on a strategic partnership. The potential of our cooperation after the merger between Shell and Vigi Group have considerably expanded. We intend to deepen our interaction and undertake work throughout the whole value added chain in the gas industry from exploration and production all the way to processing, marketing and sales, utilizing the uh, asset swap arrangement. This model working will provide the partners with an additional margin as well as the distribution of risks. Gazprom is leading in the area of pipeline transportation, whereby Shell is a leader in the industry of the liquefied natural gas. The liquefied natural gas will enable us to attain new yet untapped markets for the pipeline gas and provide us with the diversification and the flexibility of our supplies. Dear colleagues, in Europe, throughout the past several years, we've been witnessing a trend towards the decline of the consumption of gas. Starting from 2010 until 2014, it went down by almost 20 percent. At the same time, the supplies into Europe by our competitors, including the liquefied natural gas, have also considerably gone down during this period. Only Gazprom and the Norwegian producers were able to increase their deliveries and Gazprom's figures almost five times higher than that from the Norway. Much more indicative is the fact that against the decline of the demand for gas in Europe, the Gazprom's share in the European gas market has been steadily growing during the past decade. Just uh, from 2010 until 2014, this growth amounted to almost seven percentage points. This is a long-term trend which will be beneficial to Gazprom irrespective of the course of things in the European and global economy. The most important factor in the European gas market will be the reduction of own production. Irrespective of what kind of scenario will play out in terms of demand for gas, the depleting volumes of the European own production will have to be compensated for within the next few years already. And so the amounts of the supplies of the Russian gas both in absolute terms as well as its share in the European market, would only grow. Dear shareholders, in 2014, 
about 35% of the aggregate amount of transit of gas uh, towards European countries were done through the marine transborder pipeline system such as the Blue Stream and North Stream. These strong pipelines have proven their efficiency as the most reliable export channels in a stable way delivering contracted demands of gas. They are providing to the European energy market the guarantees of supplies, predictability as well as uh, the ability to be confident in what will happen tomorrow. That is why our foreign partners are demonstrating their inclination to expand their cooperation with Russia and with Gazprom. A very convincing testimony to this was the signing of the documents on the construction of the third and fourth lines of the gas pipeline from the shores of Russia to Germany along the Baltic uh, Sea. We're talking about the North Stream 2 with a capacity of 55 billion cubic meters of gas a year. The agreements between Gazprom, E.O.N., Shell and Alfau were the results of the pre-investments and pre-project work which has been conducted throughout 2012 till 2014. We are also expecting that very soon this project will be joined by gas Wintershaus company. In some immediate future, we will set about to create a joint company in order to run this project. We will use the experience that we had in the North Stream project, um, using the companies which is currently building and uh, operating the North Stream 1. So this successful experience in the Baltics would help us to optimize our cost as well as the time for the construction. Both lines of the North Stream 2 will be commissioned into operation before the end of 2019. North Stream 2 will be built for the new volumes of our exports, the development of the new transport infrastructure along the shortest route connecting the gas fields in the north of Russia and the European markets will be conducive to increasing the security and the reliability of supplies under the new contract. Uh, that in full applies to the Turkish stream pipeline in December 2014, Gazprom and Potash. Turkish company signed a memorandum of understanding on the construction of the gas pipeline through the Black Sea. So the gas along the first line we plan to completely dedicate to the Turkish market. And it will come to Turkey in December 2016. Increasing the transportation capacities in the Baltics, as well as the construction of the Turkish stream pipeline, is the diversification of the export channels for the Russian gas, as well as the strengthening of the energy security of Europe. Dear shareholders, in the reporting year, we once again were convinced that neither the economic crisis nor the external political tension will stand in our way to move forward. Thank you for your attention.